just know that they will build on each other and the videos will be helpful in getting things done along the way. So with that being said, we're going to start off with um, Moxie websites. And as we always do, we're going to start in the hub. That's where you usually wind up when you jump into your Moxie for the day. You'll go to theamericanrealty.team and it will take you to your login and then you'll log in to your hub. Now I am in a sample user today uh, because I've already created a website in mine. I can't go through and show you the beginning phases of that process. So I've created a sample that we're gonna work in to build as we go through these next trainings, okay? And um, I hope that you're able to absorb some of what I throw at you. And if you need additional assistance, remember, you've got your technical support link in the menu, which takes you to the information for technical support. You can also send me an email to support at theamericanrealty.tech, or you can use the little widget down the bottom left, ARP help, and that will send a ticket directly to me as well. I do my best to try to get back with you as quickly as possible. And sometimes I have to escalate things beyond me to Moxie and I have to wait on their response, but I'll try to communicate that with you as I do that if there is something that we have to do along that line. Sorry, Adam Cooper. I am the tech support person for the um, brokerage now. So uh, you'll see my face a lot. You'll probably hear me a lot as well as we go through this process. So there are two different ways to begin building your website. The first way is to click on my website in this top menu bar. You'll notice it says my website. And if you click on that, it will take you to the new website creation tool page. Okay. Or you can come back to the upper right where your picture is, click on the little drop down carrot there, and you'll notice website here with the nice red triangle with the exclamation point telling you that your website has not been created yet. Okay, so if you go to website and you see that, then that's telling you that it's probably not there. So those are the two ways you can get to the creation portion of your website. So we're going to click on this website link over here. When you click on the link that is under your profile picture, you're going to get this, which says set or edit the current website URL or to create a new website. With this, we're creating ourselves a new website. So we're going to click create a new website. And you'll see you'll wind up right back at this new new website creation tool. Now there are two steps to this first part of creating your website. The first one is to choose whether you want to create an agent website or an agent team website. Most of you will create an agent website. However, if you are a team leader, then you may want to create an agent team website. So just know that those options are available there. Can I change from one to the other? Like if I change, if I create an agent website now, then uh, once he's ready and make a team, can I switch or do I have to? No, we'd have to, re, we'd have, to have it reprovisioned and then recreate it. Okay. You can't have both. Huh? You can't have both. You have one or the other. Yeah. So if you do have a team and you've got a team leader. Hey, Adam, uh, Adam excuse me. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Adam? For some reason, all I'm seeing is the American Real Estate University logo coming through on Zoom. Okay. Let me look and see why. Am I the only one? I think you just need to change your view. You have to pin the screen that has the um, the actual video in it. You should see the tiled 
participants over to the yep. side. And you should be able to pin the one that has the, um, basically it's coming from Adam co-host. And when you pin that, it will pin my screen. And you should be able to see my screen then. Okay, go, go ahead, I'll figure it out. Okay, um, what I would recommend is if you've got a team that you request a team um, a specific login for Moxie that you build your team um, website in, that you have maybe your team presentations built in, that kind of thing, and then it leaves your personal ones open to be able to build your own individual ones if you want to. Okay, so start. I can kind of just start with the team. Well, that you're not going to be able to change in midstream from one to the other. That's why I recommend maybe if you have a, a team login, a dedicated team login, you do a dedicated team page there, and then from your personal, you can build an agent one if you want to. Personal, right, Moxie, because I will have. So as a team, I would have my own. Moxie and right. then each individual person would have their own Moxie and then they would have a team admin account okay. that you would create your team website under. Okay. That's what I would recommend okay. because it makes it easier. It keeps your individual one open as well. So each team member can maintain their own identity and have their website set up individual if they want to. And everything can kind of bounce off of each other. It makes it uh, a little more effective if people only know one name or the other. And they're trying to get in touch, things can link backwards. So, so you can't have to see it. I'm sorry. So you can't have that. You can if you've got two accounts, multiple accounts. But the team admin account versus an agent account. Um, now, for just an individual agent, I wouldn't recommend having two. No, no you're going to need one. You're all on uh, one account. Well, talk about it. But if you create an agent website on your personal one, you're not going to be able to create a team one on your personal one unless we reprovision your website account and then you have to start over. So start with a team, which I'm start I, with I, whatever one you want, but you can't switch back and forth. And if I have individual websites like like um if I have already have like our Georgia MLS websites and stuff that we have, don't I know they don't have anything to do with this, that won't affect that in any way. Okay. So this is only through Moxie. Okay. I mean, it, it'll be it'll be visible to the public, but it's only through Moxie that you're building this. It's not going to impact any websites that you have through Georgia MLS or anything like that, individual okay. hosts or anything like that. Okay. The second step there is to give yourself a domain name. Now, normally it uh, is something that you choose dot agent dot moxieworks dot com. Okay, so this might be where you put your name, where you put uh, your team name if you're doing a team website, but this is a sample account. So I'm just going to type web sample and click check. And what it does is it checks the Moxie, Work, Moxie Works domain and sees if that name has been used by anybody else. If it comes back and says it's available, it's available. Um, if it comes back and says it's unavailable, you just need to change it to something else until you find one that is available. And if I started this already, because I remember starting this a few weeks ago and I got real busy. If I already started this, you're saying that I couldn't I, uh, go. I have to you can't this. rename it or anything like that, no. Okay. Yeah, we, we would have to go in and have it reprovisioned and start over. I think I stopped at this point when I figured okay. it out. Okay. Once you've got a, a name that is available, then you can click submit. Once you click submit, it'll say your site has been created successfully, and then you can click go to site. The next thing that pops up are your terms of use. And if you are one that wants to read through all of this, you're welcome to. Um, if you're like me and you just scroll to the bottom and then click the box, that's up to you. 
but you'll have to click the box in order to be able to hit continue. You can also click on printable version and it will give you a version that you can print out if you want to read it at a later date or if you want to keep it in a file somewhere, that's up to you. And then you click continue once you've accepted. And then that way that opens your agent website admin tool. All right. How many of you have ever had the experience of building a website in WordPress or something like that? How many of you have ever heard of WordPress? Okay. This is built on the WordPress chassis, if you will. Um, so it's going to look a lot like WordPress. Uh, it does function a lot like WordPress in some of your customization options, um, but it does have a very boxy spin on things because of the way they organized it. So you can do um, certain things in a certain order and, and walking you through the process of creating your website. So the first thing I want to do is I want to go over the, the, the appearance of what you're looking at at this point. You've got three different areas, really four when you get right down to it, but you've got this top menu bar here, which we'll call the admin bar. Over here, you'll have your login, your sign out, your admin home, et cetera. Over to the far left, you'll have a button that says visit site. If you click on that visit site button, it will take you to the current state of your site. So if you'll notice, all I have done is that first two-step process, and I'm in here with a website. Very simple website, All right? The good thing about the way they have this set up is you don't have to do any customization to get a website up and functioning. You fill out that two basic information. Now you have a URL that you can link to, that you can put on um, marketing material, whatever you want to, um, that takes somebody to a website, all right? And this is what their basic unedited website looks like. It does an IDX search here at the top with a headline. It's logo with American Realty Branding up here at the top left. You've got your basic navigation as well as your login options here for you as an agent. Down below your IDX search, you have your picture and your information that was brought in from your profile in the roster. Okay, so it pulls in all of that information. Then it has a default featured properties set, which it pulls from MLS and it pulls from the brokerage so that there are, you'll notice featured properties here. You'll also have a sample mortgage rate calculator or, or uh, graph at the bottom. Neighborhood news, which can give people more information on signing up for neighborhood news. And then the copyright information. The IDX search just works just like it does on any of the standard realty websites. You enter an area, a city, a zip code, and it will pull that information up and show you available properties. In your menu options across the top, you have a property search and then a My Active Listings tab. If you click on My Active Listings, it pulls from your active listings on MLS. All right. Know that remember when we did engage and present, we're synced into our MLS. That's where it pulls our active listings from. Our second option is buying and selling. They have some predetermined information that's in here on buying and selling tips, as well as financial calculators, if someone needs to use those. The About Me takes you to the bio or the contact information you have. Again, that information can come from your roster default. And then Neighborhood News basically gives somebody the opportunity to see what it is and sign up for it. And all of that without doing anything except for answering those two questions and clicking Submit. You've got a website, a website up and running, ready to go. Okay. 
Now, in most instances, we're going to want our website to function a little differently than what the default is. So we may want to take it a little bit further. And that's where they have gladly set aside some information called common tasks. This main area here is what I'll call the body or where a lot of stuff is just presented. Text, page information. Uh, this is where you'll do the bulk of your editing, your workspace. And then over to the left, you have navigation that will take you to the different things that are available to you while you are here. How did you get to here? I didn't see. This is what you land on when you first go to your website. This is what you'll land on. Remember, I clicked, I clicked on visit site that took us to this. And all it did was open a new window for that. Along your navigation, you've got a help screen, which opens up your Moxie help topics over here to the right. These are topics that they have in their help database. So it might be a good reference search right off the bat to look for things if you can't find something you're looking for. Then you've got other options over here to the left that we'll get to as we work through the common tasks in doing this. You'll notice the first part of this introductory text talks about everything that I just showed you. The admin bar is what's across the top. The view site link here, visit site on the left, and then the admin navigation menu all the way down the left side. And then these common tasks you have on the left side, they've basically set a path up for you to go down to build your site and to get it more customized. Okay, each one of these common tasks has a go there link. You hover over it, you'll notice it changes color. That tells you that's a live link. And you can go to each of those when you want to. They have tried to order it so you kind of build in a logical manner. All right. So the first thing we're going to look at after we continue looking at this page are our common tasks. Then you've got your complete your site activation, which has a couple of things on there that you're going to want to do, even if you're staying with the basic default site. And that is make your site visible to search engines and to set up a vanity domain if you wish to. Now, a vanity domain would be like GeraldCooperRealEstate.com. Okay, that's a vanity domain. It's not something that's going to be websample.agent.moxyworks.com. Okay, so you'll see that there's a difference there. TheAmericanRealty.com is a vanity website. All right, so you've got the ability, if you purchase a vanity website, to have that routed to your Moxie website. All right, and that's very easy to do as well. So one thing that you would need, even if you're staying basic, let's complete our site activation. And we're going to go to the make your site visible to search engines by clicking on the go there link. All right. It pulls up these basic settings that says blog pages show at most 10 posts, syndication feeds show the most recent 10 items. For each post in a feed, include full text or a summary. And then search engine visibility, you don't want to discourage search engines from indexing the site, okay? So you want to uncheck that box. That way, search engines, when they're indexing sites, are going to index your pages. So if you've got an article in your blog on new home trends in Southwest Atlanta, then you've got that that can be searchable and can be indexed, okay? So you're not going to want to discourage the search engines from indexing. And then you click Save Changes. All right, you'll get the green up here that says Settings Saved. And then you can go back to Home on the upper left, which will take you back to that admin page where we started all of this. Okay. Remember, we were down here, and then the vanity domain, if you want to set up a vanity domain, you go here. It shows the domain you have on this site, which we created, websample.agent.moxyworks.com, and 
That's our primary domain on this site. Now to get a custom domain, we can click here to get a custom domain, or if we have one of our own, we can fill out the form to do a link to where everything is linked that way. Now, depending on what host you have, you can do that without even going through this process. If you're with GoDaddy or iPage or any of those other hosts, all you have to do is go into your redirects and redirect that domain name to the URL, which appears at the top of the page when you go to your website. Redirect and uh, proxy. You basically, then you'll go to redirect in whatever your host okay, is, gotcha. and you'll copy and paste this domain in there. Okay. Okay? Um, and what, what that's going to do is it's going to redirect all the traffic to that do primary domain to this domain. Okay, and that's really the easiest way to do it because it maintains ownership of your domain where you already have it. And for a lot of us, that's easier because we may have other stuff that we're paying for with that as well. Okay, so just know that you can set up custom domains for your websites. All right, again, to get back to our Task that we need to achieve, we're going to click home. Bring us back to the agent website admin tool. Any questions about what we've talked about so far before we move on? If you're in Zoom, just unmute and shout out. I got a question. When you when you were talking about the special website that's linked for you, you mentioned the word purchase. How much did they cost? Uh, the question was, when I mentioned the uh, custom website name or the vanity domain, I mentioned the word purchase. Um, it depends on who you want to go through. Uh, some of them, like GoDaddy, I think they're like $4.99 a year or something like that, just to have the domain name. Um, they vary depending on what service you want to use. You purchase the domain through them on an annual basis, and then you'll have the ability to redirect that to heat. Okay, so all you're really paying for is that vanity URL. Okay. And again, that would be worked out with through whatever domain host you wanted to use. I know Shane uses GoDaddy, I use iPage. There's some others out there called Bluehost, others that you can find. Um, so I pay it's cheaper than GoDaddy. I have GoDaddy. Um, GoDaddy is probably the cheapest. I found with iPage, I've got some other stuff that I do with them. They give me more control. Okay. over intricate details and technical de de details that I like to have control over. Um, I'm not OCD or anything. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, uh, I'm more familiar with iPage because that's who I've been using for years. Okay. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. So, um, but GoDaddy is a, a very good resource. That's what yeah, I have about three through there. So I was yeah. wondering. I and I do know they have the ability to redirect, like we talked about. I do, because I have it directed to my Georgia MLS right now. Yep. And when you start saying that, that's why I ask, is it through Moxie or are you referring to? Basically, yeah, you're, you're, you'll yeah. go to GoDaddy, you'll set the redirect to this web page. Yes. It won't go to your Georgia MLS page anymore. I know. Yeah, yeah. that's why I was at. Yeah. So I may have to create. And I want to keep that one. Right. And I can just. I just need to exactly. It. And what I would probably recommend doing is link to your Georgia MLS page from this website. So all your traffic comes here first, and then they can redirect there if they want to. Okay. Just give it as an option. Okay. Because what this does is you'll find that if you have a place to capture information from people, it goes into your engage. So it captures leads and puts them, puts them into your pipeline. That's okay. okay. Whereas your Georgia MLS one doesn't do that for you. No. Okay. The good thing about Moxie, it's all integrated. So you get information from here, it puts it where it needs to go. Okay. Okay. All right. So will they give you an idea about how many people are looking at your website on a weekly basis? Or I believe you can look at analytics. Um, and that's a more advanced topic that we'll get into. But I believe you can look at an analytics as you go through things. Um, and I'll try to make an, an, a note to 
know exactly what to discuss about that when we get there. So if nothing else, you'll have that um, on video that you can refer back to. Thank you. So the first common task they have outlaid for us is to personalize your site style. Okay, now you click go there and it gives you three options. It gives you, okay. <laughs> it gives you a search focused homepage layout, which is the first one we looked at. It gives you an agent focused layout and it gives you a custom layout that you can create yourself. All right. So the search focus, we've already looked at that. I'm going to preview it just so you can see it again. It has a headline at the top. It's got your IDX search information, and then it's got your information here, as well as the other stuff that is down below. Okay. Now, the agent focus is similar, but it shifts some of that stuff around so that you as the agent take front and center at the top. Yeah. Then it puts your idea in search, and then it does the remainder of the things in the same order it did them before. Okay, and then the custom page gives you the ability to create your own look for your home page. Okay, so you come in here and you've got an editor, you can add media to it, you can do whatever you need to do to tweak it, to make it however. Um, and that's what we make it into in our third class because you can go so far down the rabbit hole with this, it's ridiculous. <laughs> the big thing I wanna make sure everybody's got the ability to do is to get a website up and running first. So we're gonna come off of this page. We're gonna go back to here, all right? And then once we've selected between our search focused or our agent focused, we click publish, and it will make that change. You notice here, it's got the ability to choose a color palette and there's a company default, which is a black palette. Um, you can choose to check that or you can choose to uncheck it, whatever you wanna do, but just know you've only got one option, that's the default option, okay? At this point, it may change. All right. Once you're done with a certain thing and you've hit publish, you'll notice it gives you this little green up here that says your theme has been updated. That's a way to know that something's gone right. If something goes wrong, it'll be in red. And usually it's in red all the way across the screen. So it's almost like, you did great. You did bad, you know? <laughs> so just know that it will let you know when you mess up. To get back to where we were with our custom, um, our things to do, our, our things to customize, you click home again, and that'll bring you back here to your common tasks. The next option is to personalize our home page. You click the go there link. Hey, Adam, then, before you jump into that, can, yes. can, I, can I interrupt you one second? Yes, go ahead. So if you choose the, um, uh, when you personalize your home, your site style, and you chose agent focused, if you hit publish, across the top, the bar across the top of that page is white with white letters all the way across. Do you know where you would go to change that lettering in the bar in the search to black? You said or here. Change? You said like, the focus is white. If you say agent focused. Agent focused. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. Agent focused. Publish oh, yes. that. Yeah. See how it's all white across there? Let me make a note of that. So you can change the, the font color. Honestly, I am not at my computer and I can't tell you right offhand where to do that, but we can, we can send a note to update you on the font color. Okay. It's also within the same page. And we, we will probably get to that today. Okay. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click agent focus since that is the one we're having an issue with. I'm going to click publish. All right. 
So then you'll notice that it says it's been updated. So if I click visit site now, it's going to go to that agent focus where we have the mismatch of colors, right? So as we work on this, maybe we can find out where we fix it. All right, so we click home to go back to our tasks. We're going to personalize our home page. Go there. And then here it gives us the option to title our home page. Now, and there's pretty much the standard across the internet is to have your initial landing page entitled your home page. I wouldn't recommend renaming your home page, okay? Because there is a standard that seems to work very well out there for having your initial page named home, okay? People are going to think home page when they're thinking of the first page in a website, okay? We may refer to them as landing pages. Most people are going to refer to it as a home page, okay? And in many of the search indexes, it will index your home page as well as your blog page, as well as your contact page. And depending on which link they click, will take them to a different page to do that. Now, the next thing down is a background image. You'll notice over here, this is the background image that it's defaulted to. You've got the ability to upload or choose an image. And it even tells you the dimensions that image needs to be. Okay? If you're in a previous class, you may have heard me refer to Canva. Canva is a good free way to edit and create your own images. They also have a lot of stock images that you can use royalty free. If you choose to pay for their pro version, you have a lot more images you can pick from royalty free. So you can actually go in there, create a new page or a new image at that exact size, drag one of their stock images in it, pull it to where it looks right and fills the screen, and then save it. And you've got a new image you can use here. Okay, so just know that Canva is a valuable tool when it comes to creating things for your website. Now, the next thing down here, you'll notice text color. Select the color for the text appearing on top of the image. So if there is any text on top of this image, we have currently selected white. If that was a very light colored image, I would select black. Okay, because your text is gonna be across the image. You don't want a light colored image with a light colored text. The next thing down is your background effect. And this will depend on the contrast between your image and your text color. You may need to apply a light or a dark tint or effect over the page. You can darken it, you can lighten it, or you can choose no effect at all. Can you change that to light just to see what it does? Yes. It won't show it here. It'll show it when we publish it. Oh, okay. 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 So I'm going to leave it as light and we'll go from there. Okay. I'm going to change my text color to black since we chose to lighten it just to see. Then the next thing down is our profile settings. Now you remember it pulled your profile information from your roster information. You can come in here and overwrite all of that information. Okay. You can put a different headshot here if you want to. You can change the name, you can change the title, any designations. You can basically overwrite anything that is already in there. All right. It doesn't change it in roster, it only changes it here for your website. Okay. And if I go and change it in roster uh, first, then it should actively populate over to this. Uh, is that going to be any time I change in roster? It should be any time. Yes, any time. Yeah. Right. With everything linked, it should be good. Okay. Now, if you've made a custom change to this, it won't automatically link unless you come here and click reset to default. That's going to reestablish that link back to your roster. Okay. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. If you make a change here, that's going to sever that link. It's going to say, hey, I don't want that link. I want this information. Okay. So when you reset it to default, that's going to be like linking that chain back together, okay? The next thing down is your welcome text. Now, the welcome text is whatever you want displayed on the website as welcome text. 
It can be media, it can be whatever you want to put in there. You'll notice you've got your add media button here, and then you've got the ability to add whatever you want down here. Now, just know that the tools that you have to edit text are what I would consider primitive compared to some of the fancier things that you might have in today's word processors. So just know you may not have all the options you might have in other word processing programs. In other words, if you're looking for a specific font that you've got in Word, it may not be here. Um, if you're like me and do graphic design, you've probably got thousands of fonts that you use, but they're not going to be here. And you can't get them here. To my knowledge, you can't pull them in here because they're, they have to be loaded on the database side for Moxie. Okay. Okay. And you said this was based on WordPress. Right. Uh, and I did, a, did WordPress around 214 or something. <laughs> and I, I remember when yeah. you said that there weren't. Yeah. It's, it's what I would call primitive, very basic. Now, if you know any HTML code, you can go a little further and click on this text button here and actually use a little bit of HTML programming, okay. which takes it to that next level. But visual is definitely going to be the best way for most people to work. All right. And then down here at the bottom, you've got your feature properties module. Remember when we scrolled down our homepage, we hit our featured properties. We can retitle that if we want to. And it gives us the ability to choose from a property list that's a default in the system. We've got my offices listings, which is the brokerage, my active listings, which are your active listings from MLS, your sold listings, Featured properties, which is what we've got here, my office's listings, my company's active listings, and my company's sold listings. Now, there is a difference between my office and my company, because as a company, we have three offices. Yeah. One's in South Carolina, one's in Florida, and one's here. So you're going to want to make sure, if you're wanting it to highlight featured properties, that you choose your office, unless you, just, for some reason, just want Florida and South Carolina properties to populate. Okay? You can also choose how many properties it will display. You can select to show all the way up to 100 properties, but that means they're going to be scrolling for days down your homepage. Okay? What your homepage does give you the ability to do, though, is once it's you've got your feature properties here, they can still click on any of these properties to go to those properties, but they can also click on these little arrows to go to additional properties, okay? So even though you may only have four listed, you can actually go to other ones by clicking on those, right? Very rarely would I recommend listing many more than what it's already got there as a default. And it, I noticed that it has Highest to the highest price, it looks like it's uh, descending. I uh, started at the highest because I'm having a problem with my Georgia MLS. And I uh -huh. called them last year to ask them how to pull that uh, to make that uh, okay. be that way. So it looks like this one's set the same way. Okay. They, they basically said that they were pulling from. Uh, and they're sorting uh, high low. Yeah, and then so only thing that's showing on my screen though are the are five, and it's like million dollars. The five highest price properties. Yes, and then they, yeah. they weren't changing that. And you kind of get into a a catch twenty two with that because if you've got properties that are nothing but lots, they're going to be your lowest price properties. Right. And if you've got million dollar properties, they're going to be your highest price properties. So if you sort from low to high, all you're going to see are those. Lots, and if you sort from oh, high yes. to low, yes. you're going to see the million dollar homes, and that's all. That's all. right. That's so I think I'd rather have the million dollar home showing than the lots. I would. Yeah, it's just that I. But then, if I'm not I'd like, I'm trying to get a mixture on the right. Or they said that there was yeah. no way for me to change. Well, one thing that you can do is you can set up custom searches 
and that's what we'll get to. Okay. Um, when you set up custom searches, you can plug them in different places as well, and people will be able to look at those. So, okay. All right. So we've got our feature properties, and then we've got here custom search, and it says create a custom search. You'll notice it says you haven't made a list yet, so create a custom search. Now, there's a process to building a custom search. If you click on this, create a custom search, it says you're going to leave the site. You want to leave it. I'm going to wait. I'm going to save my information first. So I'm going to come down and click publish. If it tells you that if you leave, you're going to lose things, go down and click publish, unless you don't mind losing whatever you've just changed. Okay? So click publish. You'll notice that at the top, you'll get the little green line that says everything's been done right. And then you can come back down to where it's going to take you away to another screen here. So if I click create a custom search, custom property search, this is where I can enter the title. And then it asks for a path. Right below that, it tells you the path must begin with search forward slash. And then it gives you a tip. And this tip is the best way to do it. The easiest way to construct your custom search path is to execute a search on your site. When you have the criteria set as desired, copy the URL, beginning with the word search from the address bar and paste it in the box above. So what it's saying is go to your sample site that you've got up and running, the very basic one. And you'll come here and you're gonna create a search. Okay, so say I want to look in the Madison area. Type in Madison, Georgia, hit search. That gets me to an initial search of the Madison area. From here, I can use my filters. Remember, we use filters in our presents to basically customize what we're looking for. We can look for single family homes only. We can look for townhomes, manufactured homes, land, farms, ranch, whatever we want. But we create a custom search built on these filters here. Over here, we can show active, sold, or all. If you're building a search for people looking to buy, you're probably only going to want actives. I'm going to exclude pending, pending listings because if it's already pending, odds are there's a contract, there may not be a kick out. So you're not going to get one of your buyer interested in that because they might find their dream home and it's pending. And you can choose to also exclude coming soon if you want to. You can also select here in person open houses or virtual open houses. Once you've set those, you can click apply and it will change the outline or the guidelines of your search. You've also got the ability for this search to utilize your school search for school zones to draw. You can do a quick draw or a multi-draw. If you choose multi-draw, I can come here and say, okay, this is the area I want to look at. I don't want to just look at Madison. I want to look at all of this area. And what it does is it takes that drawing that I just did and it expands my search. I can also do a radius. So if I know I want to look at a certain radius from Madison City Center, I click in it and drag, and it tells me this is an 8.23 mile radius from, from Madison Center. Okay, I can click and drag it. I can make it bigger. I can make it smaller, however I want to. And what that will do is you click Run Search, and that runs the search based on that circle you just delineated. All right, so I'm going to say this is my custom search. It's an eight, nine mile radius around Madison. This is my custom search. And I want this to show up as my custom search on my homepage. So I come up here into my address bar and you notice the word search here, right after that domain. If you come here and you copy by clicking and dragging to the right and you hold it out there until it finishes scrolling. Did everybody see how that? how that worked, then I can let go of my mouse button. Then I can right click in this highlighted area, click copy, come back to my custom search window, click in my path, right click and click paste. 
And that puts all that information that I just copied there. And then I can name this around Madison. All right. I've got two options at this point. I can submit it, say save, and it's gone to where it needs to be, or I can look at it. So I'm going to sit here. All right. It tells me I've got an error. My search must begin with the word search. So let's clear that and go back and look at what I did. When I copied, I copied that first slash. Does everybody see that? It doesn't want that first slash. So I remove that, click preview again. This time it shows you what my custom search is going to look like. It's going to pull up the exact same thing that I searched. Okay. And the thing is, when you do this, it, it's going to constantly update the properties in that search area whenever anybody goes to that custom search. So those properties will constantly be updated. All right, so I click save. Let it go through its process. When it's working, you've usually got the little circle rotating in that top tab until it's done. It gives you the little green thing that says search updated. And then what we're going to do is we're going to go and we're going to look at our homepage again just to show you what that did. All right, so this is our sample. There's my featured properties, our sample mortgage stuff in our neighborhood news. Now, what did we do? Why did it not show that? Let's go back to home. And let's go down here to our homepage customization. And then let's scroll down where our custom search is. We want our custom search. We don't want to hide the widget. We want it to be there. We're going to come down and click publish. I go back to my website and refresh it. You're going to now notice that I've got a custom search directly below my feature property search. Okay. So just creating it, pasting it where it needs to go is not going to publish it to your page. You have to go back to that customize your home page and publish it there as well. Okay. Do you understand that? I'll, I'll, You're I, following? I, I, I have to kind of see it and do it online right. at the same time. But when you go out a little bit, I was trying to see the actual search. There's the feature property search. Okay. And there's the custom search that we did. So it's got those properties that we searched around Madison, and I can see more listings from this search by clicking here, or I can click on the slider and it'll take me through them in a carousel. So you're saying the one that you created is, is this one right here, custom search. Okay. And then this one okay. is the feature properties. Okay. okay. Yes. Now, what I can do to make it a little more clear is you'll notice down here under custom search, I've got a titled custom search. I can title it around Madison, even though that search was originally called around Madison, I didn't change it on my web page, my homepage. So I'm going to change the title, scroll down, click publish again. That would make more sense to me that there you go. would be named around Madison. Refresh my page. Anytime you make a change, you need to go back and refresh your page if you've got it open so you can see it. And then here's my custom search at Grand Mass. Okay. Hey, Adam. Yes, sir. Pardon me for asking a dumb question, but why, why would you do that when you can just go to the regular search and type in Madison? If you're trying to target a particular market or a particular type of market, um, you can do that just for that purpose. You may go through periods where you're really targeting luxury properties or lake properties or Madison or, or Monticello, and you can create a search for those particular areas that meet your marketing or your targets for that time period. So, okay. so if that's if that's the case, can you do multiple custom searches on your homepage or only one? You can only do one on your homepage. However, you can do them elsewhere as well. Okay. Okay. And I'll, um, I'll show you that. It may not be this class. It'll be the next class. So there's a okay. little <laughs> Not that I'm trying to get oh, people here. 
Okay. Yes, yes ma'am. Go ahead. When you the custom that you did, uh -huh. you said it keeps it updated, uh -huh. but in the feature properties also continue to update yes. as well. Okay. Yes. All of those property link searches are constantly updated by what's available on the market, etc. So you know, when you go to Zillow, it's going to show you all the stuff that's currently updated. Problem with Zillow is a lot of times that stuff's not removed in a timely manner. MLS, a lot of times we enter it in. When we enter it in, it should come off. Okay. MLS is going to be the most accurate link over and above Zillow and Realtor.com and all those. I've had people call me about properties on Zillow and Realtor.com and they've been under contract or sold six months ago and they're wanting to look at it. So this being through MLS, I think it keeps a more current list available to your clients. Then they want to know why, why you didn't show me that. Exactly. out here. So <laughs> hey, you got agent. it. You've also got the ability to have a blog module. Okay. If you have a blog that you're interested in writing, whether it be about community events or anything that you want to use to further your marketing of your business, you can do a blog right from here. We've also got the ability to do podcasts completely through our webpage using PowerPress. You'll notice down here at the bottom on the left side, it says PowerPress. So we've got the ability to do that. You've got the ability to really use a lot of tools to further your marketing and further your, your, your webpage and your identity in the market. Um, it's just whether you use it. Right now, we've created a very basic page that's up. It can help our clients find information. We know how to change that custom search to tweak it if we're doing certain areas or communities. Um, we can even come down here to do useful links. You notice down here under the links module, it says useful links in the link category, blog roll or none. We can create different links here by managing our links. We come here to add a link and we can add a new link and we name it, put the web address for it, give a description, and then basically where we want it to open. So if you want a link to realtor.com or Zillow or something like that, you can create a link for it and it'll appear. And what I always recommend doing is the purpose of a website is to draw your traffic to you, right? You don't ever want to send somebody away from your website to somebody else. However, if you do have to do that, force it to open a new window. That way it keeps your site open and it opens this in a new window, right? Then they close that tab. Your site's still up in the face, okay? If you choose to open in the current window, it's going to come right over top of your page. And it gives you the ability to open in a blank, a new window or a tab, top, current window or tab with no frames, or none, the same window or tab. So if you want it to open in the exact same place your site is in right then, choose none. But otherwise, I would choose blank for target, and it opens a new tab. Okay. Now, if you add those new links, they appear on there once you click publish, and you go from there. All right. Now, we're going to continue going through the common tasks as we move through this training. And with each one, you're going to find we get a little more complex in what we're able to do. Because we're going to move into default search areas, which is going to be very similar to our custom search we did. And Sean, that would answer your question about creating other custom searches. Um, you're also going to be able to create custom search links that can go in your navigation bar. So if you want to create a navigation area that is, um, you know, it may say featured areas or something like that, you can have these custom search links in there that say around Madison, around Eatonton, around the lake, something like that. And they're all custom searches that are linked in there and are constantly kept updated through the MLS. So you've got a big way to funnel traffic into your website with those. And see, you don't have to funnel them to your homepage and hope they find it from Facebook. You can go to that particular page on your website, copy and paste the URL, paste it into Facebook, say, here's what's available around Madison. Pop, it's up. 
Okay. Good question. Yes. If we want to do a blog, yes, ma'am. How long should it be, and approximately how long should we leave it up before changing? Good question. <laughs> there are as many opinions to those questions as there are um, yeah, that's options. A, that's an open ended really, question. Exactly. Uh, the question was if we're to create a blog, how long should it be and how long should we leave it up? The big thing is a lot of times your information is not going to be necessarily time sensitive. So it doesn't hurt to leave it up because somebody looking for it may be indexed into Google. They do a search and a blog you wrote last year pops up. You're going to want that to come to your website, right? If you had removed that after six months, it wouldn't have been there for them to find you. So we can leave them in. Oh, yeah. Somebody, it'll keep them back. Yes. Blog articles, you can leave them there. All right. They go to your website. Somebody searches. They can find that blog article. And it takes them to your website. Okay. Adam, I second that opinion because it, you could leave it up for years. Like you can go on our current website and see our newsletter posted as our blog and that stays up forever and ever. So just know that, yes, I completely agree with that. That knowledge is out there. You're educating people and you're referring people. So I, I'm with you. The odds of you repeating yourself are probably slim anyway because you're going to want to constantly throw new information out there. But if you do write something new that does duplicate previous information, you know, maybe consider archiving that one so that it doesn't show as readily. But even though somebody might be able to, might be interested in seeing how things have changed, you know, they read that first article and wow, they read this article and go, whoa, market's really moving. If you, you, know? you did something like the paint colors, those are trending, they change from year to year. Exactly. You have to go back and update. Right, right. Uh, uh, Adam, and, uh, yeah, from a tech, oh, I'm sorry. Am I walking over somebody else? Go ahead. From a, from a uh, space or, or a memory data standpoint, if all of the agents that are using Moxie start saving blogs and just leaving them on there, do we not bog down the Moxie database or the Doxy server, Moxie servers? Um, Moxie is the tool for Rilogy, um, which is Remax, I believe, and a couple of other very large companies. Yeah, so, um, so I don't know that they're going to be hurting for space because they have to have server size in order to meet the quantity for those particular agents. Um, also, this is designed for brokerages that have a large number of agents, so I don't believe it's going to be an issue. And honestly, in the business, out of, a, out of 300 agents here in our office, there will only be a fraction of them that will utilize the blog tool. I would I'm, just, I'm just going to copy your blog anyway. Nice. <laughs> can people do that? Can they come in and copy our blogs and use them somewhere else? They, they can copy your information, yes. That's why in your information, I would always put something in it that identifies you. That way, if they copy or link to your information, it's, it's there. Okay. Um, anything you put out there is considered your data, your information. Um, and if somebody else uses it, they're supposed to give you credit for it. However, we all know that yeah. people copy and paste all the time and don't give credit. It's going to be done. So, you know, it's, I don't know that there's a way to prevent that. So <laughs> something special. The return on investment of suing them is probably not worth it. Um, plus it gets your data out there. And even though you, that's why I say, put something in it that identifies you. Um, and put it in multiple places. It's harder for them to remove it. Okay, so think about that. Pictures you use, maybe brand, you know, that kind of thing. That way, when they copy your link or whatever, it's there. And just know if somebody shares that link and puts it on their web page, that's going to be a link back to your web page, which is going to help you with Google and other search engines because they look for those link backs when they rate people up. Okay. Sorry. And does the blog always have to be that? Does the blog always have to be about real estate? And in that answer, I would say no. And in almost every instance, I would recommend probably out of every 10 articles, make eight of them about something other than real estate. 
like politics and religion. Not like politics and religion. <laughs> 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 Community events. I can't train on daily devotional, I think. That's it. If you want to, you can. Just know that you might alienate half your audience. Yeah, they know. might need it. They might. <laughs> you you can put in your blog whatever you want to put in your blog, honestly. But just think, you know, if I'm going to be buying a house in a community, I may want to know what that community is like. So doing community events, um, you know, say you go eat at a new restaurant in a town in somewhere that you're trying to sell homes in. Write about that new restaurant. You know, community events are going to establish you as an expert in that community. And that's what you're going to want people to see because you want them to trust you. Okay? So I know we've reached our time for today, and I've really pushed out as much as I can in the amount of time we've got. We've got two more classes, so just know we're going to build here. We're going to start where we left off. So we're going to start with that customize your default search area and work from there next time. Are there any questions from anybody on Zoom land or here in class? I didn't um, see the picture. You remember when you lightened it and put the letters in? What had happened? Let's go back and look. This band across it is the lightened part. You see how it's a lighter mm -hmm. color? Yeah. So if I go back to customize the home page, I'm just going to show this real quick. Our text color was white. Here's darken. So if I choose darken and go down and publish it, remember you have to refresh every time you make a change. There's the dark. So you see the difference? But you've also checked black for the Wait a minute. Yeah. I've, I've also still got black text. So yeah, that's what I wanted to tell you. You changed it. But... There you go. It changed now. Yeah. So there's the dark. And where it says web sample. Up. That would be where I would change the text to white. Okay. Right. Black. So, yeah. Black. So there are, there are, those are your only choices. No, uh, no color. So. Yeah. No pink. No, yeah. I'm sorry. No she pink. said no pink. <laughs> If you know HTML, you can bypass some of that stuff. Um, that's and that's matter. further advanced down the rabbit hole. Right, right, right. That's yeah. the Cheshire cat laughing at us as we try to make changes. And I think yeah. I did some of that back when yeah. you died. So you died. The best thing I can say, and I, I hope everybody takes this as it's intended, but before you link it to your vanity domain or before you put it out in the public, play with it. Yeah. Go in there, change stuff around, find what looks good. And plainly, like I tell my middle and high schoolers that I teach computer science to, try to break it. Oh, you shouldn't say that to me. If you break it, we'll just reset it. Okay? Right. So go in there, play with it, learn how to use it, learn how to make tweaks here and there. And don't be scared of it. If you make a change, all you got to do is go back and remove it or undo it. Everything you do is undoable. Okay? It's not like we're shooting something or somebody. We're just simply making a change in computer code. Okay? Any questions from Zoom land? Thank you all for joining us. Our next training is 10 o'clock. Next Thursday, it'll be here in the downstairs classroom or on Zoom. Make sure you register. Thank you all. Have a good day. Thanks, Adam. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. We'll be giving away um, a prize for someone who is attending, for those who are attending. So just make sure you're in attendance. We'll be asking questions, giving away prizes for people who are participating and who are actually engaging in Moxie. And um, we're hoping to get more and more agents involved in Moxie so that you can get more and more active and more and more sales. So who gets the prize? Thank you, Adam. Cool. Thank you all. The prize, this is the first I've heard of a prize, so nobody gets a prize today. There's a cookie cake in there you can grab a piece of. There's donuts in the agent's And there's donuts in the agent's room. Oh, maybe something like <laughs> lobster tail, crab legs. Whoa, very expensive. Whoa, she yeah. likes she crab likes legs. Nice stuff. Yeah, yeah. Crab, crab legs. I can't have that either. See, yep. so she can't even get the She can't have the, she can't have the prize if it's crab. Yeah. You're like, I can't. Lady. So fish and nuts. Bring oh, some crab legs. Oh, bring that stuff that I can. <laughs> 
I know that's part of the I'm going to get one of those little dolls. <laughs> 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 